Are there, yeah. Are there any more formal proposals? Oh, all right. Moving on. Uh, we're now going to move on to soapbox. General discussion. Just kind of anything you want to talk about. Anything you want to talk about. If you want to talk, come down here, get in stack. Try to keep your uh, soapbox short, Two, concise. Three, Try to keep it four, to about five minutes. Yeah, you, you know, you, 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 oh, yeah. just introduce yourself. Oh, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Um, I, I just want to get tell you guys thank you so much. Um, I'm really busy on the farm trying to produce good food, and while I'm there, I've just been so much more hopeful than I was over the past number of years, to tell you the truth. Um, Seeing everybody, you know, around the world, watching my computer while I'm making cheese of all the people, <laughs> having democracy be like this, it's it's awesome, it's encouraging. I didn't actually, something you said earlier, I didn't actually realize how depressed I was about stuff not happening like this. So it's it's amazing, and I want to tell you that it's true that some of us can't be out here as much as you guys, but we appreciate it so much. I've cried so many times just in appreciation. Um, watching some of the old people, and I put myself in that category too, who are doing stuff behind the scenes that that is really important. It's not, we're not, we're parts of a body. We're not all doing the same thing that's really important. But we are doing important things, and I just appreciate this part of the body so, so, so much more than you can even know. And I think it's brought a lot of us back into hope um, from what we are seeing. And I'm, I'm very encouraged, and I just want to say thanks. And we're going to get back in some ways. We don't exactly know how much and exactly how. But we are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, cool, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Um, hi guys, sorry, I've been talking a lot tonight. I have major concerns about the um, the spreading of work around here. It's becoming um, slightly party. I want to remind everyone that this is supposed to be a sober space. Um, please keep that in mind. Also, if you seem to have been idle for several hours, help. Because there are several people that I notice don't do anything. And I'm not going to call you out personally, but eventually I will. And I won't be, I'm not trying to be rude, but you know who you are. And please start helping. Because people need to be fed, people need to be comfortable, and it is a huge, huge concern of several people. Please don't just, I mean, coming for GA is really important. I know everybody has work, school, all of those things, as do I, as do other people that are helping. Some people have more time, but please, guys, please, I beg of you to help. Thank you. Hi. Um, my name is Russell, and first and foremost, yes. Oh. Hi, my name is Russell, and uh, first and foremost, just love and peace and, and blessing. Um, I practice Capoeira Angola, and if anybody knows much about the art form, it has strong ties with peaceful resistance, um, as well as with community and, 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 and trying to trying to build a sense of community. Um, our group would like to come here on Saturday and have a heart at it. It's just us playing Capoeira around four o'clock. So anyone that wants to be around. Be blessed with your presence. And I just kind of wanted to make that announcement. Um, along with that, I tend to have every other Friday off, and so whenever I can get here, I plan to try to do like free Cabo workshops. Um, 
I'm trying to stay in contact at least with Gabby via Facebook, so my schedule is always like, ah! but I'll try to leave enough heads up for word to get out. It'll probably be around midday. Um, if I can find a way to provide music, it'll just be kind of sharing knowledge of movement, philosophy, and, and I don't know, hugs and gifts. Um, really, that's all. Thank you. Y'all be lovely. We see you. Thank you. Can you spell a couple of Did everyone hear me? Yep. All right. So um, I imagine some people, uh, most of you probably know what's been going on the past day or two. Um, imagine most of you are upset about it. I haven't really talked to everyone how they feel about it or how they feel it should be handled, if it should be handled, because I've heard a lot of talk about how should we handle this situation. How do we deal with this? What do we do? What do we do with these people? Who's to blame? How do we address the situation at hand? And in reality, I feel like that we can't really address the situation at hand because we cut our, our fucking hands off the first day when we came here, moved into a park where 30 people lived. Um, we can't really establish an ideal society for ourselves and try to function off of some model like that when we're already doing something that's inherently oppressive. We've affected the people's lives who lived here already, and there's nothing we can do to change that. If we leave, they'll be affected. If we stay, they'll be affected. Whatever happened, probably would have happened whether we were here or not, but we involved ourselves in it. We got our hands dirty, and now we feel bad about it. And now a guy's in jail. I'm gonna leave you to your own solutions, but I want you to think about this. Because honestly, there's nothing you people are doing here, myself included, that can't be done anywhere else, all right? So maybe we should think about moving somewhere else. Maybe somewhere more accessible. Somewhere where, you know, there's not going to be fights going on. There's not going to be people we don't want to deal with. Sketchy people, whatever. However you want to consider them. However you want to consider the situation. I myself, I'm pretty uh, fucking depressed about what's going on right now. And uh, I've been keeping to myself about it. But if shit doesn't change around here, I think a lot of people are out. So, what do you think about it? Um, you still have a point of clarification? Okay. Uh, I understand now. Okay. I didn't I guess this is in support of what he just said and what Ramey brought to the table. One solution is that everybody attend that safe space meeting tomorrow. I'm, so, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's supposed to be, it's, as for, for women, request, it's supposed to be for women, women only. only. Okay, well maybe I would propose that men have their own meeting too because, you know, we're all a family here. This is our occupation. This is a community. We're all brothers and sisters and we all love each other very much. We're not trying to segregate anybody. We're not trying to get anybody out of here, right? Right. So there should be a women's meeting and a men's meeting and then the women and men get together and try to come up with some solutions to make this safer for everyone so that when, when more people come, they're not uncomfortable. I just wanted to add to that and I'm not trying to make this go off on a tangent, but I've seen how some of these things play out um, when we have like gatherings of people, especially a bunch of people that don't know each other. Um, and that's a really good suggestion. Um, just to clarify it, from what I see what the men's group should do, the men's group, especially if we're talking about gender related conflict, should be accountable to the women's group. And usually what happens is when uh, a women's group or a people of color group or some group around a specific demographic get together they talk about the problems that have been going on and they may list grievances or make requests of what other auxiliary auxiliary group can't talk tonight um, and then that group like in this instance the men's group will get together with those requests and those lists of grievances and talk about how they can help make things better um, that's just a suggestion of maybe how that could go, um, just because I've seen it done that way before, and sometimes it works really well if people are serious about it. Um. And I guess, 
since there's not a lot of people here tonight and those people are unaware of the events that have occurred, we should now go out and include all of our other family members to come to tomorrow's GA and to the Women's Safer Spaces meeting and hopefully have a men's meeting as well. That's it. Hi everyone. Hi. Um, I'm Danielle. This is more a question to you guys. Um, I received a call today from an occupier who had been, he felt he had been content censored. He was told by someone, supposedly, that his signs in opposition of the drug war and um, in favor of marijuana legalization were not allowed to be displayed in this plaza. Now, in talking to numerous people, I have not found out who told them that or if that policy actually exists, but I want to know from anyone who can help me if that is the policy of this occupation. And if it is, I, I mean, I, I think we should have some sort of a discussion about that because I have not heard that yet. He had a direct response. You got one? I believe that there's no official policy on signs. Personally, I've seen some signs I don't agree with. I haven't said anything to the sign makers. It's a really sensitive issue. Um, I guess that's it. Sir? Sir? In response to that, we have to always remember that we are operating within the process of democracy, correct? Correct? Woo! <laughs> we have to follow certain laws, correct? No. The promotion of the legalization of an illegal no. controlled no. substance is against the law. What we're doing we is against the law. We have to promote that here at this camp to my understanding. Yeah. That's just what, I, what I'm understanding. Um, the reason that I ask this is because when I was told that this was a policy, I would block this policy. I would leave this movement. I would, if, if you decided that the drug war was okay and that we couldn't fight against it, that's the reason I am here. I would block this. So, I, I need to know if that is our policy, because if it is, I'm leaving. It's never been approved. It's not? Good. Okay. That is why I brought it to you guys. I mean, the, the policy to me, the policy is that we all, and we've said this time and time again, we all have individual grievances. We're all here for a lot of different reasons. We all have the right to put those grievances on a sign. If, I mean, that's what we've been doing this whole time. And like you said, if, if someone doesn't agree with that, you're not speaking for the whole group. That's a sign, one amongst many. It's not an official stance of the group, but it's just one of the other reasons why someone might be here. Um, this, it's absolutely right because I gotta tell you, as a farmer, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's legal that's fucked up. <laughs> so, so I mean, that is why we're here. There's stuff that's not legal that should be. There's stuff that's legal that's really messed up. So, looking at it from both sides, it's a, it's a good thing to include it all. We have uh, a and then I remember we had from day one we had uh, issues here. Um, censorship. Um, you know, people writing on the uh, pyramid. Some people didn't like what they what they wrote up there. <laughs> fucking left camp over it. And people got upset. And then they realized in the end that they should write all, you know, all of what they want all over the pyramid, right? Say whatever they had to say. Just represent themselves that way. So I mean, whether I want to hold a sign that says "kill cops" or you want to say hold a sign that says "hold cops' hands, we love them." It doesn't matter. You know, that's what you're here for. We don't have a platform. We don't have demands. We don't have goals. So why can't we just say whatever the hell we want? Yes. I would just like to add that Wait, can you hold if you up? see a sign that you don't like and after the policy, you're free to talk to the person about it and explain to them why it is that you feel that it shouldn't be around. This is an open society. Let's treat it like that. Joe, did you have one final point? Oh, that's right. 
I kind of want to start closing up this discussion, if anyone... Uh, Eleanor. Okay, um, I haven't been here for the whole conversation, so I understand if you guys are trying to wrap up. Um, but I wanted to address two things. I'm hoping that they haven't been addressed already. Um, but quick sort of in response to what you were saying, sir, I think that's really uh, important. But also, um, for the most part, um, we don't know who puts up which sign. There's really no way to know. There's no signature, you know, there's no phone number that says like, hey, if you want to talk to me about it, you know, give me a call. Um, so a lot of people come here and they see a sign that they not just disagree with, but are made uncomfortable by or um, feel like is violent. And, um, and that has serious effects for them. And they can't necessarily just go and find the person who wrote it. Um, so sort of related to that, I think one um, suggestion uh, that I, I think is a, a good one is that if you're writing a sign, think about how it affects different types of people. For instance, end financial slavery. Um, slavery is an institution with a long history in this city, a particularly horrible history in this city. And to compare wage labor with slavery is to compare phenomena that had very, very, very different repercussions for people. That affects someone, that affects different people differently. And to some, that's an offensive statement. So I would suggest that if you're writing a sign, try to be conscientious about how different people are going to react to that sign and try to take some ownership of what you say and how it affects people. Third point, I'll try to be brief. Um, everyone has a right to free speech, but also certain messages have repercussions for this movement and have repercussions for this event in particular. I understand that people want to talk about, uh, some people, uh, want to create violence against the current system, but those messages will bring violence here. They will bring the, insti the ins they will bring police, they will bring oppressive institutions to this space. Violent messages are dangerous for everyone here. I think that's important. Sir? But I was seeking clarity. I was not taking a position. I was just seeking to understand better the issue. Upon talking with a close, loving brother who I love dearly, now I have gained the clarity that I needed. I'm not with censoring anybody myself. I just wanted to be sure and clear on the policies that I'm lending my energy to. That's all. Because I'm here until 2035 if need be. So I wasn't taking a position and if you disagree with with me seeking clarity, I'm sorry, I was just wanting to be sure, because I'm in this for the long haul. And plus, the legalization of marijuana would drop the grade. I don't want my grades dropped. I wanted to stay, you know, gangster. I like, I, I like the good stuff. <laughs> for, those, for those that didn't know, now you know. <laughs> right. Uh, we now move on to the next uh, continue our soapbox. Next topic. Um, sorry, just one last thing I forgot. I have a friend who's like dying to guide a meditation um, session here, and she really does want to try it like tomorrow night. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not an astrologist, so I apologize. But there's a moon and there's Scorpio involved, and she's excited and giddy about the situation. So I'm off at 7, and hopefully we can get down here after that. I understand GA is going to be going on. Um, I understand you all will be having, hopefully, two meetings. Um, hey, if it can be coordinated, it might be something nice for both groups to do after the meetings and after the reconciliation together, for everyone to meditate together. Who knows? But I'll be in contact with whomever I can see if we can get it coordinated, okay?
I just to let everybody know there is a spirit squad and we do meditations and everything like that. So. So then I will get her in touch with you. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And everybody should come to those because they're really yeah. fun. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Hi, my name's Rain. I haven't been very involved. Um, I've been doing some research about why, you know, statistics to try and help other people that are sort of interested, curious. And um, I, I read yesterday that um, two thirds of black people are in worse financial straits than they were when Martin Luther King walked in Selma in 1965. Um, I don't see a lot of black people here. I see, you know, some homeless, sir, and, and others. And I just think uh, the white liberals that sort of betrayed the black movement after the uh, legal victory happened for civil rights, but there was no economic victory for these folks. And now, so white people are now losing their homes. There's a million foreclosures expected this year. And it's like, oh my goodness, let's take to the streets. We've been screwed when they've been screwed all along. And I just think we ought to be uh, aware of that and understand. Um, I mean, I've never been in the middle class, but understand a reluctance of some people to join in on this very important movement. Um, uh, I had a police officer thank me up in D.C. He said, thank you for what you're doing. I had my Stop Bitching, Start a Revolution t-shirt on, and I'm at McDonald's because Food Not Bombs ran out of coffee, and he said, thank you for what you're doing. And I was like, really? And he said, yeah, I have a full pension, but the guys hired after me don't have it. You know, and I said, well, I got to go to Richmond and occupy there and, and have my job, and I've got a daughter. And he said, well, when you, uh, I'll be off on my next day off. And he said, will bring more friends. So I just wanted to pass that stuff on. Thank you. Thank you. Direct response? Yes. I like, I, Mark, I, like, I appreciate your perspective. Great. I'm one of those, and I, I try to get my peers in tune, and I've been in, in tune and involved since Monroe Park. And uh, I appreciate your research. I'm one of those who do that too. And I think it would be beautiful if they will come out more on, and stronger and show, and, uh, uh, show their presence. But I think I just want to let you know. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alex. Hey, Alex. Hey, Alex. And I've, I don't really say very much very often because I just kind of figure it's better that we're doing something. The fact that we're actually here in this park means something. We actually showed up. We're not sitting behind our keyboards and just being assholes to people. Um, <laughs> it's more important that we're here. Um, but I've heard a lot of the talk, a lot of what's going on here, and I thought it might be kind of important to remind us um, of exactly the kind of fight that the Occupy movement has picked. Um, the people that we've picked a fight with uh, have been starving people in South Africa and South America, uh, there have been people disappeared. They just, you know, you get up one day and your neighbor's fucking gone and he never comes back. Uh, nobody knows what happened to him. Uh, you know, people have been in poverty all over the world and the people that we've picked to fight with are the people who could have done something about that and chose to make money off of it instead. Um, so if you think that you're going to pick a fight with those people and not be able to get over some petty bullshit that's going on in your camp, you're fucking wrong. You're just fucking wrong. Um, we have picked a big, big fight. Yes. And we are going to have to stick together. We are not always going to agree, but we are going to have to stick together if we're going to make any difference at all. I am not the kind of guy who has normally come out and join things. I'm not a joiner. Groups make me nervous. You act yes. strange when you all get together. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but this is important. And this is the one chance that we are going to have. If we screw this up and we don't make it, they are not going to let it happen again. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you that. The ordinance that makes us illegal to be here 
was not established until after the protest movements of the 60s and the 70s. They brought those ordinances to bear because they didn't want any more protest movements. We cause problems. We screw things up. We need to keep in mind exactly the kind of people that we're fighting with. They are not going to think twice about wiping us out. They don't care. They're going to get fat off of our debts if they have to. We need to keep that in mind. So we can fight with each other about these things. That's fine. If you really want to do that, go right ahead. I will hopefully still be here in the park after you're done with that. We need to keep in mind what we're doing and who we're fighting. Don't for one second think that they are going to forget that we're here. I'm done. Nobody has a problem with vegans or vegetarians. There was a fight in the kitchen. Somebody wants to cook me. Speak about it. All right. There, there was a fight in the kitchen about me being cooked. I don't care if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, but don't push your beliefs on me. There's me being cooked. So what? You know? You believe you the way you want to. I'm going to believe the way I want to. I'm going to eat what I want to. You eat what you're. I don't ever say nothing when it's only vegan, vegetarian stuff. I'm just. I got, I, I got really mad, okay? And I was in Afghanistan for 22 months. I'm a violent person. I walked away, but I just wanted to stay here. Nobody says nothing about vegetables. Please don't say nothing about me, you know? My wife is anemic, you know? She needs me, you know? We help out, let it be cooked, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you don't like it, don't eat it, you know? I don't say nothing about vegetables. You know, don't say nothing about me. You know, sorry I had to bring that up, but you know that was just yeah, that was a fight in the kitchen. That's that's some shit that doesn't need to happen. All right, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, uh, I kind of I feel exactly the same way Alex feels. Um, I, and what I'm about to say is not a slight to anyone or to play up my contributions to what I believe in. I don't know how many revolutionary activities you have been involved in in your lives, but this is far from a game. You don't think that Warren Buffett or Lee Iacocca will send goons here to hurt you once their stocks start plummeting, once this movement gains momentum? You don't think that? If you don't think that, you're in the wrong place. I consider considered all those things before I devote it voluntarily because I'm a human being who does have empathy for the human condition. I love people, I'm a people person, and I believe that people deserve equality, fairness, and justice. Not at the expense of our lives, not at the expense of us being marginalized into a small group. This is very serious. I wear this globe around my neck as a visual tool that I said, well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm too intense with the things that I say, and maybe I'm too abrasive with the truth or too brutal with the truth. So maybe if I remind people that in this little small funky town called Virginia, there's a big world that's dependent on each and every one of our contributions <coughs> to the movement. Ladies and gentlemen, we do need to get it together. Let me be real quick. It's far from economics and politics. Anytime you engage or petition men and women to change, you must affectionately internalize this change. You are all on a spiritual journey. Some of you don't even know it. You must begin to embrace the spiritual aspect of your being in order to be a solid force against these folk. This is not a game. We are here in a community. These petty squabbles, they drive me nuts. I myself was a part of one last night because me and a gentleman who says he does not support us in principle and practice could not agree. And I simply asked him, how is this that you do not agree with our principles or practice, but yet you benefit from our energies and hard work? That bothered me. 
and I let my emotions go. Anytime an intellectual is offended, it's usually from a principal sensibility. Because I usually don't let human things bother me. Because you, we are who we are. Let's get it together, brothers and sisters. It's, it's time for us to get some serious continuity. I love each and every one of you because I try on a daily basis to individually extend myself to you. I am here for you. My life is not mine. It is for you. Everything that I am is for you. Help me help you to exist in this community better. That's why I'm here. And I do love all of you. Let's have a good evening. Let's remember we are occupying Richmond to send a positive message that we have come together despite those differences under one single truth. We are human beings and we deserve to be treated right. Nandi, and uh, this is my first meeting, and it's been a pleasure. It's been really inspirational. I have a direct response from what one of the previous gentlemen said about petty bullshit that's happening in the camp. I don't think women feeling unsafe, women reporting harassment, and unwanted sexual advances as petty bullshit. The fact that a white male said that, the fact that this space is dominated by white males, and the fact that that came out of his mouth is very disrespectful and very contradictory to this movement, or whatever it's claimed to be, all right? We, if we want to make change, if we want some sort of social justice, then we all have to be inclusive of different marginalized groups and if they're feeling unsafe. The lack of people of color, the lack of queer voices, the lack of women, women of color on this platform speaking is very, is contradictory to what we're trying to achieve. And I'm very disappointed that people were actually applauding when that gentleman referred to that as petty bullshit. The fact that women, female body individuals, are feeling unsafe. Is, is that what, that's what I assume. Well, and even, yeah, even wait, 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 Go, 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 no, no, continue, no, 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 continue. continue. Right. No, it's for sure. Even, even if it wasn't referring to that, the fact that it's, it's not petty bullshit. If someone has an issue, especially if it's someone who's part of a marginalized group that's voices are not being heard, it's not petty bullshit. I, we all want so, equality and social justice and all that great stuff, of course we do. But we also need to feel safe. We also need to feel safe. All right, and a lot of people I've noticed have been speaking on their soapboxes and the same voices keep coming back and forth up here. That's very, that's very, that is why this, that is why you see how empty the space is because it's not welcoming. And you have the same gentleman coming up here continually raging and understandable anger, but it's misdirected and it's not clear. That's all I got to say. Sir? Thank you. To speak to what, to, sorry, no, sorry. To speak uh, to what you said, back. sister, and appreciating what you said, and if I understand correctly, you said you weren't actually sure if the comment that was made in regards to the incident with the young lady was being referred to by a close confidant of mine as petty. In behalf of his character, I know that's not what he was talking about because, like me, he is a man who respects women to the highest degree. Also speaking to your statement concerning the lack of people of color, this General Assembly is by choice. You give your energies and you give your time if you choose to. It is not my fault if the rest of my brothers and or sisters do not choose to participate in their own occupation for their own rights. That's not our fault. Also. Unfortunately, there is a small class of brothers and sisters here, but that's not the point. We are here united under our ideology, not gender, not race. So in respect to your feelings, and I know that you are sincere because I feel it, that is not the case at all. We value the protection of women here highly because I'm a person who has committed myself to nonviolence, and when I heard about it, a couple of my buddies had to grab me. They still got to watch me now, because I'm still hot about it. I want to assure you that if you choose to occupy with us, you will be safe, you will be educated, you will be loved and treated fairly, because that's what we strive to do on a daily basis. We are still growing, and come help us. Help us. Don't give us your energy. There are others more vocal than others. That's not my fault. But at the same time, we got to remember why we are here. Why we are here. This is my point, sir. That's, your points are valid. But this is not a welcoming space for people of color or for people that are marginalized. 
that is my point. And this is this That's is That's not our fault. We don't have laws. And I'm not saying that it's your fault, sir. But it's the point of this assembly to make it welcoming for people to, that are not a part of the dominant society. And this is more about the 1%. This needs to be more intersectional about racism and homophobia and transphobia and sexism. It's, not, it's more than that. And that's what's bothering me. Is that there would be more marginalized people showing up if this movement was more intersectional and if it, and if it included the broad picture of capitalism and that, that it's not only simply about the banks and the corporations, that it's more than that. Sorry, can we get a point of process right here? I appreciate that there is an emotional intensity about this exchange. I wanted to say if the facilitators can clarify when direct responses are allowed and when we are not allowed. Point of process. Sure. I should also mention that this is soapbox period, which is not necessarily a period that uses the process. This is more of a period where if discussion needs to be had, that would be the point in which stack is cut. Then we get a line of people to respond. That's how it's done before, and it can certainly be adapted, but this is soapbox, not the end. Yes? Wait to say that I think the young lady and sir, sir both have very good uh, points. She may be white in her perceptions, and I um, just want to encourage everybody. But the fact is, these facilitators are doing a great job. They're not perfect. We all know that. Anybody wants to help them, anybody wants to help them bring about the vision of this young lady, is probably welcome to do that at any time. Yeah. Bentley, can we? Thank you, Nandi. Thank you, Nandi. Uh, I agree with you, Nandi. One of the education team's purposes is to create forums to hold education uh, sessions on those uh, specific topics that she brought up. For instance, this Sunday, we had the LGBTQ uh, discussion. We had a nonviolence discussion. Um, everything that that we're trying to do here if you come to the forums you'll be educated and you can bring everybody out so all I was really gonna say was was that we're in the infant stage because this is day 10 am I correct yes yeah. this is day 10 so we still have a lot of work to do and I just want to remind you that um, as we move further and create the building blo building blocks for our community, then those situations will be addressed, and hopefully, all those beautiful people will be here speaking um, for you, Holly. For all of us. Right. For all yeah. of us. Cal response. I just wanted to say that I, in no way, meant to give the impression that uh, assaulting a woman is petty, uh, but there is a, a lot of petty bullshit. Right. That's They're different things. Yeah. Um, you can figure that out for yourself, number one. Yeah. And number two, I would absolutely fucking love to see more minority people here. That's right. I live in a city that is 50% minority. Come on. If you can help us figure out how to get them here, Come on. please stay. Now you're talking, Alex. Please stay. Help us. And help us. Help us figure that out. Give us I don't know back. how to do that. I don't know, you know, I, I don't even know where to go look. But we want that. I want that. I want a better society for all of us. Yes. We have a stack. That I'm done. I want to say that it's really wrong to place onus necessarily on minorities. Um, it's it's part of why you know the system is so fucked up. Is because if you're mad about it, well, you can change it. Um, but it shouldn't always be that way. The onus of participation should not always be thrown on people of disprivilege because 
their disprivilege limits their access. Not only that, but I agree with Gandhi in that this space is somewhat unwelcoming in terms of it being fairly homogenous um, and not an accurate representation of Richmond. And I just wanted to put that on the table because I've been coming here since, off and on since the beginning. Granted, I haven't stayed in camp. I've heard and seen things while I've been here that were a little upsetting, but I think it's important that it's, it's in everyone's minds. That's all. All right, Randall. Yeah. There seems to be a slight issue with um, the number of minorities I represented here. And we talk about advertising ourselves to VCU. I was wondering if we've advertised ourselves to Virginia Union at all. This is an idea, maybe to bring more people um, here and get more no. to the city. I would like to say uh, I'm part of a majority. They say I'm a minority. Come on, Mark. I live in this community. I've been started, came and met some great people a month or so ago <coughs> in Monroe Park. And this, this democratic um, atmosphere mm -hmm. and, and lifestyle we have embraced have showed me that we have lived in, in walls that they could, um, have put up. Whites over here, blacks over here, poor over here, educated over here, rich here, there. Right here, everybody, I walked up to Steven or the Wing Nuts, those anarchists, and I get a genuine conversation. I get a help with coffee. I get hugged. And how we doing? I know about their family. They know about my family. I don't get that in my neighborhood, but I get that here. And I take it back home and I transfer that energy. And I feel I'm a better man in my house. I got more patience with my children. I share some things with my mom that she never lived to see. And she said, okay, keep doing what you doing. Yeah, we got some hiccups and we bump some things. We learn it. Because in society, the so-called real world don't teach me those things. But I'm learning something new here. And I'm seeing it grow daily. Thank you. Thank Josh. you, Mark. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mark. Man, Mark, you almost just spoke my mind with that one. I mean, you know, while we might not physically have an accurate representation yet of the diversity in this community, I'll tell you the probably the most profound common thread that I have found amongst every single person in this group is welcoming arms. I get more motherfucking hugs here than I ever got from my own family. So this is a family. And we are working to put, everyone is working to put things in the process to make those marginalized voices heard. You know, we use progressive stack. That means that instead of just calling on a bunch of white guys, you know, because you look around, you see a lot of white guys, that means if we see a female's hand go up, or a person of color's hand go up, or an LGBTQ person's hand go up, that we embrace that voice and we do the best that is possibly available to us right now to help get that voice heard. And if you have ideas about how this can change and how this can be improved, the only way to implement those ideas is to come and do it yourself because none of us are paid. There's no, no staff here. This is a collection of random people who are all passionate about the same thing. And nothing's gonna change if you come and say, well, I think this just changed us. I think this should change because it's not welcoming. No, you welcome. You are welcome. Come here, make the change yourself. You can't expect everything to do every, everything for you. Because those guys are the ones making all the decisions. And we're here to fight them, not each other. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I love the fact that we keep in mind that there are those who are slight and have been. Um, but before we spend a lot of time talking about what demographic to look at or how to get more minorities in, I, I, I think we should all, before beginning that debate, keep in the back of our minds that a protester, an orator, an occupier, a freedom fighter, none of them have a connotation of their skin. Um, the only thing that we need is clarity of vision, direction, passion, and dedication to oh. getting this done. Yeah. Ah. Everything else falls by the wayside. Let your concept of color struggle to keep up with your concept of humanity. Right. We're going out for people. 
I'm not going out for a minority. I don't say, hi, are you a minority that want to come? I say, do you think this is worth your time? Then come. If you have been, I spoke with a friend today who said he's been fighting so many battles that he's too afraid to put his faith in one more. So I told him, if I can be your facilitator of a sideline relationship with this movement that you see value in, but are too afraid to be a part of, because of your heart, then I will do that. But it's not about bringing minorities, it's not about bringing majorities, it's about simply bringing people and staying dedicated to what Amen. we're here about. Amen! Amen. Political Action Committee meeting to follow. Yes, oh, I'm yeah. going to make that announcement. We have one more. Yeah, just, just something quickly that comes to my mind that you may not be able to get this group to look like a lot of the people that you're representing because some of them can't be here, but I still feel that what you're doing is, is important for all of us. And maybe there is a way for people like me who can't be here as much for, for to offer an invitation, I don't know, on Isaac's thing. Maybe people who can't be here physically can be somehow invited to offer what they can give. And, and I, what we all have to give is so different. Some people, it may be things. It may be that they just come by for five minutes and say, thank you so much for representing me. I don't know. It may be that that it is mainly a privileged group of people in some way who can be here. Does that make any sense? That yeah, it, no. It, yeah, no, yeah. it may not look the way that I would like to see it look, or many of us would like to see it look, but you are representing people who cannot be here. I'd like to try to quickly do a three-minute feedback, and then after that we can go back to Soapbox if people want a Soapbox after that. Um, that was a political action OPP. Don't forget, that's after this. You know, a little feedback. That is, but yeah. um, personally, I'd like to thank everyone for their patience with us today, the, the group of people that's been up here. Uh, some of us don't have as much experience, but we've tried to do our best, so I'd like to appreciate y'all's patience with working with us. Uh, especially Isaac and his proposal. I'd also like to thank uh, anyone who was up here talking for the first time and getting their voice heard. That's what we need. Um, I'd really like to appreciate our, our note taker, who I don't know how he writes all this down with, without constantly asking for clarification. It, it's amazing. Um, and just, I love you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If any of you all have feedback, Feel free to talk to me afterwards, or feel free to speak up now for a minute or two. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn GA? All in favor? Yes. Yeah. Right. I have something like if people, uh, somebody, you don't have to stick around, but uh, I yeah, uh, yesterday I went to city council, and uh, I didn't know if they're gonna have like a free discussion section after, or what they didn't. And I was writing kind of like something they said made me got me thinking about you know, systematic thinking. And I kind of wrote a speech a little bit. And uh, share, please share. I'd like to, uh, yeah, I'd like to read it just to get some feedback on sure. it and see how, what you think about thinking and see it. Because it came from my heart. So, yeah, I'd like to read it. Some of it, I mean, I've been trying to go over it just to flesh out the, uh, I don't know, grammar. But uh, what got me thinking about this is when, uh, what was that guy who came up with the letter, the letter that he read? Tyler. Tyler. Oh, yeah. Tyler. No, 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 no. You're talking about this, the gentleman that came up to speak in front of the podium and read the letter of the man who yeah, I read his name down. It was very inspiring. Oh, yeah. 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 It was very inspiring. And it touched me. You know? I was touched. Isaiah. So, Isaiah. Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people in that council were touched. Right. And a natural reaction to inspiration is clapping and expressing yourself. You're a human being. Right. You know? You have emotions. All right? But the, the, clap, the clapping was, was stifled. Oh no, that you know, a rule of the council that we don't disrupt this process, this system, with you know how you truly feel. Okay? And it's got me thinking. I need a flashlight. I can go and get you a flashlight. That would be great. Or a headlamp even would be better. Okay. Uh, you're gonna get really hot. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Got a light!
No, All right. <laughs> so, no, is it clear as to what got me thinking? We got a lot. You're good, John. Okay. Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. Thank you. you got it. The, the appropriate response to an inspired speech is to recognize the inspiration you feel within you. If a system invented by humans does not honor the reality of their own emotions, then there is no reason for those beings who see the illusion of this deficiency to obey it. In a sense, like, like everybody, we clap, right, when we're in there. We clap because it was an ins inspirational kind of uh, story, right? And I wanted to give him whatever support, verbal support at least, that he would know that there's other be humans in this room that are with you, man, at least in heart, at the very least in heart, you know? If, if, you see what I'm saying? And if the, the a system is created to stifle that by humans, that doesn't honor what it means to be an emotional human being, why the hell are we? It's like we created our own prison. It's ridiculous. Right? And I, I, okay. Yeah. It's, it's a responsibility of those beings who see that, that deficiency, that, like, yeah, we get up and clap. We don't, we don't honor that kind of thing. Uh, I won't. I will get up and clap. You know? If something touches me, I will get up and let that man know, or that woman know, that it's touching me. That's just how it's going to be. And I'll say, uh, this is something Thoreau or maybe Whitman said, uh, a real man will walk out of a custom that suits him not. And that's just what And it is the responsibility of those beings who perceive this deficiency of this behavior to not honor it and to express themselves authentically and to honor the reality of what they feel moved to express. When acting in alignment with one's true feeling, one is answering to the highest authority. One is answering to their highest authority to support inspiration that is an outgrowth of a different. I don't. Yeah. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is, uh, we're to just sit there and just you know quietly like let him come up and give this thing that moved us all, and then let him sit back down. I mean. It, You've taken away just an element of that, just humanity, for no reason. For no reason. Yeah, you let the system be your thought, rather than the system be a tool for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, 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 ah, yeah. If this process keeps us in any way from supporting each other in any capacity, then it is not our job to conform to it. It is not our responsibility to conform to this council, to what the, the rules, to acknowledge the Trying to just connect back to the moments I was writing, you know, so. but uh, it is our like it is the responsibility of this council to acknowledge the reality of humanity and of itself. Oh, and to itself come to a more perfect union with the eternal truth of the human condition. And I guess this is an outgrowth, or at least a part of a problem in this world whereby people are abdicating their own ability to think for the system of which they are a part, of which they represent. They are letting a system use their minds rather than the mind driving... They are letting a system drive their minds rather than their minds driving a system. The tail does not wag the dog. Okay? Someone lets a system be their mind... Yeah, when someone lets a system be their mind, be their thought process without some sort of self-reflection, this leaves a lot of room for a system to start to diverge from human values, right? Like corporations, the love of money, right? Rather than, you know, pure, it's just pure profit and it doesn't really give much account of what the hell you're going to do with that when you have it. You're going to be existing in a world where a bunch of people are working for this fucking dollar, excuse my language, where they don't even enjoy the, the stuff they're going to make, right? So you're going to have all this money to buy stuff that really isn't worth having. Anyways, I guess it's, uh, <laughs> it's related. But, uh, the tail does not wag the dog. No, just repeat it. So just so I can that When someone lets a system be, uh, be their mind without some sort of self-reflection, this leaves a lot of room for a system to start to diverge from human values, and rather exist only for its own means. Rather than humans 
using a system to, that they created to execute their will, the system uses people only to perpetuate itself without a constant, without a constant intelligent input by those who have the largest input on it. So in turn, karma demonstrating itself once again, the system loses its intelligence and becomes un an uncomprehending system that exists only to perpetuate itself, rather like bacteria. Corporations yeah, can be lumped. I mean, I just, uh, all right, like. Yeah, should I go there? It's like when they stifled our clap. Like, what was she doing? She was just obeying the rule. You know, like, let's, uh, no, wait. I'm sure they have a time check and all this mess. But extend it. You know? This is the real world. You know? It's not little, it's not real little problems that fit into three minute little segments. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're, extend the freaking meeting. I understand you need to go home and get better with whatever. So you can be rested to, well, you know, so you can be rested to do this ineffectual system again. So, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And basically, the rules of the system impede your ability to bring your intelligence to bear to it. That's a problem. I just read that. Um, intelligence cannot be used, basically, by the very nature of the, when your intelligence, which is infinitely adaptable, it's not a limited thing. Your intelligence is infinitely adaptable. It's like water; it flows into every. The system becomes driven by ignorance, a lack of intelligence. And obviously, it's not true. And again, we exist within a system that does not reflect our best capabilities, our highest beauty. You know? We couldn't get up and clap. Well, we clap for the soldiers. We couldn't clap for that guy. Exactly. We couldn't clap for the awards. Yeah, we clap for the Nazi. And I, I didn't even know how to feel about that. What the hell? I didn't know they, 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 they allow that when they, they allow it when they, when they choose to. They stifle it when they choose to. So, exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. 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 That's what they do. And I didn't even know how to feel about that. I saw that and I this guy saying, uh, he fought in the war. He's like, oh, he did so much for this country. All right. To me, while we're over there is business interests and even uh, business interests and other things. And now this man's been sent to war and lost a leg for something because some dis some human being decided to go over there. We basically created conflict to drop profit out. You know, I don't think we're not fighting some high moral battle over there and freedom is going in because, you know, we're going over this, the death of freedom, shit like that, okay? <sighs> if someone does not lead an intelligent life, this is like when the system starts to become unintelligent, just bringing that back to humanity. If someone doesn't lead an intelligent life, they got a, a lot of problems always. They're going to have a lot of problems. Always honor the truth because the further you do, when I say the truth of what it just feels like to be a human, let us clap. <laughs> Let us freaking clap. All right? Always honor the truth of what it means to be a human. How you feel. Create a system that best reflects how you are for yourself. All right? If you, if you deny anything within yourself, you know, if somebody lives a life and denies, say, whatever emotion they may have, then pressure builds and then it explodes and there's some big freaking conflict that needs to be dealt with just to see your person. I can't think of an exact example, but you know what I'm talking about? You know, repressed emotions, you know. Yeah. Now, if the society collectively does that, then you know, we get something like this. <laughs> if, someone does, if someone doesn't if someone does lead an intelligent life, they got a lot of problems to deal with. Always honor the truth, because the further you deviate from it, the more drastic the change will have to be to come back. Right? And one will always have to come back to the truth by choice or by painful necessity. You can choose to deal with the shit you gotta deal with, or you can deny that it's there and then have the pile of trash been thrown over your shoulder and your whole life collapse. Alright? You can turn around and look at it and go, damn. And start dealing. We are asking you. We're talking about all, another thing. Got me when you say uphold the Constitution, what I perceive that upholding would include seeing that there is a necessary. 
My writing's a bit jumpy. Yeah, they're talking about like, you know, you don't have to be there for them. You don't have to camp. You can do this just as effectively. I mean, I'm sitting there. Yeah, it, it, I was getting that. like as if I was going to talk about like, if, if you decide that we can't be after, there after dark, that would be a very unexamined action. We the people are asserting our rightful freedom to assemble and we do not have to ask you whether or not we can do something that is guided by the what is in my heart, the benefit of all humankind. Right? The government is not does not tell the people what to do. The government, in a truly free democratic society, is a tool to execute the people's will, and that's it. If your main concern is it in, in this, which is near the end, if your main concern is in this is to question our ability, to question your authority, then the point is missed. We, the people, are standing up by what your own manifesto itself, the Constitution says, is our God-given right. So why is there a problem? We are asserting our rights to find a way to a better tomorrow. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Check. Mike Check. The Political Action Committee OLP meeting will now commence. That's it.